Hello everyone, so on this beautiful day I would like to reintroduce you to some basics based on Palgrave study skills, a book that was very useful in my olden days in the past. It's called The Critical Thinking Skills by Stella Cottrell and I think it is as necessary as never before. What is critical thinking? Hmm. Critical thinking is a complex process of deliberation which involves a wide range of skills and attitudes, identifying other people's positions, arguments and conclusions, evaluating the evidence for alternative points of view, weighing up opposing arguments and evidence fairly, being able to read between the lines, seeing behind surfaces and identifying false or unfair assumptions recognizing techniques used to make certain positions more appealing than others such as false logic and persuasive devices. Of course we can use rhetorics both in a benevolent and malignant fashion to further our point or heuristics or the Oxford debate win-win but preferably a symposium of ideas that circulate and enrich everyone else. Reflecting on issues in a structured way bringing logic and insight to bear Drawing conclusions about whether arguments are valid and justifiable based on good evidence and sensible assumptions. Presenting a point of view in a structured, clear, well-reasoned way that convinces others, or perhaps it doesn't. So, what is skepticism and trust? Ennis defines the ability to reflect skeptically, the ability to think in a reasoned way. In critical thinking it means bringing an element of polite doubt. In this context, skepticism doesn't mean you must go through life never believing anything you hear and see. That would not be helpful. It does mean holding open the possibility that what you know at a given time may be only a part of the picture. So, first of all, it is very important in critical thinking to have the knowledge of your own reasons, having reasons for what we believe and do and being aware of what these are, not blindly repeating automatisms of others. We hate this one, we love that one. This one we like, this one not really, based on emotional triggers. Critically evaluating our own beliefs and actions. Why do I dislike Judeo-Christianity? Because it damaged me. That's an emotional factor. Why do I dislike Judeo-Christian theology? Because I find the hidden Hellenic theology superior to it. And I can present all the arguments in favor of it. Am I convinced to rhetorics and persuasion? Yes. Is it malignant? In a fashion? Yes. Is it true? In a fashion? Yes. Because I present an argument that I can support with concluding and supporting arguments. So, being able to present to others the reasons for our beliefs and actions. Always question, question, question. Why do I behave in the way I do? Why do I present those lectures? Because I want to spread some ideas. Why do I want to spread some ideas? Perhaps to inspire some people, not to seek a vainglorious quest of uh, narcissistic gabbing my... whatever, funning my gab. I want to present something in order to introduce some people to certain concepts, certain ideas from the experiences I gathered throughout life and the knowledge that comes with it citing Cato the Elder, quote, follow expertise. I want to share my expertise in my own field. <coughs> that is magic. Therefore, constructing and presenting reasons. Select and structure reasons to support a certain conclusion. Present an argument in a consistent way. Use logical order in order to support your arguments. Use language effectively to present the line of reasoning. So, what are the benefits of critical thinking? Improved attention and observation, more focused reading, understanding, memorizing what you read. Improved ability to identify the key points in a text or other message rather than becoming distracted by less important material. Most of people nowadays are illiterate, not in the sense that they cannot read or that they cannot understand what someone is saying to them, but uh, they cannot even find facts or arguments in a simple 
texts, not to mention that they cannot construe a single argument of their own in a precise and complex manner. Knowledge of how to get your own point across more easily. Either we lower our standards to those who are literate and they don't get it at all and try to walk from the bottom up or we set our pitch high and risk that we won't be understood by anyone or some circles that are, well, without snobism, intelligent enough in an intelligible fashion to exchange information in a reasonable manner. Skills of analysis that you can choose to apply in a variety of situations. Knowledge and research. Emotional self-management. I have spasms of anger and sometimes it conditions my argumentation line, my reasoning. Of course, it does. So, development of understanding. Very important. The Saturnian regime, understanding, right? Dealing with ambiguity and doubt. So, non-dualistic, the world is complex, no blacks and whites, just grey areas. Sometimes a yes, a no, a straight line and a goal, but it is rare. Mistaking information for understanding. Hmm. Insufficient focus and attention to detail. How many of us can have focus, attention and concentration mastered enough to focus on what I'm trying to convey right now. For example, how well do you think? Develop your thinking skills. Da 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 da. Ha! Ah, persuasion through reasons. An argument. What is an argument? It includes a position or point of view, an attempt to persuade others to accept that point of view, reasons given to support the point of view. Nowadays, it's a position or point of view that is merely a preference. You imagine that you persuade anyone to your argument by uh, commenting on Facebook or, or Instagram or anywhere, but nobody gives a fuck. So reason is given to support the point of view. If you are dealing with living people, there is a greater chance that you will convince them to anything as a living mortal. Because honestly, nobody gives a fuck what you write on Facebook or Instagram or how you comment on that. And if it changes your opinion in any manner that is not supported by arguments that are rock solid, but by opinions, emotional triggers and preferences of idiots, then don't expect that, uh, that it will be otherwise. Idiotis, at the Greek word for the unwise. I do not mean to offend anyone. Unwise people, idiots. Uh, next one, hmm. hunting out the conclusion. Where is the conclusion in your argument? Like when somebody presents an opinion like, uh, I like this political, where is the conclusion and the argument? Why do you like him? Give me the argument. Provide me with the argument. I don't know, but... No, give me the arguments first, and then I will agree with your arguments or not. And perhaps we will reach a conclusion together. And people stop. And say, no, no. I need no arguments, I black this and the none of your business, and so on. So, is it an argument? Argument and non argument. Huh. So, let's focus our attention more accurately and make better use of our time in selecting what is an argument and what is not an argument. There may be a description. An account of how something is done or what is it like. No reasoned accounts of how or why something occurred, nor do they evaluate outcomes. So, uh, non arguments can look like arguments, especially if they result in a final conclusion. I like cats because they are cats. Use the same signal words as an argument in order to help the flow of the writing. Blah, blah. So, Distinguishing argument from other material, extraneous material. I really recommend this book to anyone, everyone, honestly. How well do they say it? Clarity, consistency, and structure. So an author should present his position, present his propositions and reasons, a line of reasoning, conclusion, and persuasion. If he's a good rhetor, he will persuade in a clear and open manner. Use of indicator and signal words in order to 
indicate something. Clarity and internal consistency. Nothing then contradicts if we use clarity and consistency that undermines the main message. Inconsistencies make an argument hard to follow, leaving the audience uncertain about what the author is trying to persuade them to believe. And sometimes when we build advanced philosophical or thought structures, we may get lost in translation. I'm aware of that. And I'm often using shortcuts that are incomprehensible to others. But hey, uh, we're not children, right? So either we build from base up and try to reach a broad audience treating everyone like children and idiots that don't understand the world, or we are heading on a sophisticated level of understanding and hope to reach a smaller audience, but nevertheless convey something useful. Uh, logical consistency, independent reasons, joint reasons, conclusions, logical order. Hmm. This book is written in a very good logical order. Connoted meanings, correlations, false correlations, assuming a causal link between two things or more things, and providing arguments for them. So, sufficient conditions, necessary conditions to meet a certain point. False analogies. When you compare one thing to another, it may be bombastically overinflated or completely wrong. Other types of thought argument. Emotive language. Attacking the person. That is the most common thing nowadays. Let's... Uh, let's... You're the bastard. No, you're the, the bitch. And I'm right, because you're wrong. Let us remember about what one Japanese prince said back in the Dogen Zenji's time. What is true to one is false to another. What is false to one is true to another, and so on. Where's the proof? Where is the proof? On the web, on the internet. No, it's not. Primary sources, observation, certain certainties, education, knowledge, discernment, understanding, wisdom to discern through it all. Reputable sources. Nobody trusts reputable sources nowadays. They are all false. We know better. We are the ones champions of knowledge that absolutely know fucking nothing. Sociology of ignorance. There are the known knowns. There are the knowers of all that have no fucking idea about whatsoever. The knowers. The no knowers of knowers of all. Currency and reliability. Relevant. So, I'll uh, quit this lecture right here, right now. Da. Good luck. Thank you.